Thank you for joining us. So glad you're with us on this broadcast. I'm Jim, and my wife Sheila is now going to read today's devotion, and we're going to come back and talk about it for about 10 minutes. Thank you again. <laughs> we are going to be reading from the Elevate the Day devotional that we started a couple of weeks ago. This is a really good one. I'm enjoying this. This devotion is called Trust God and Do Good. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In my 20s, I watched my colleagues and friends get married. I had one resounding thought, Why them and not me? While I was genuinely happy for them, I wished it was me. During my corporate career, this why them and not me demon appeared again. I watched colleagues climb the ladder when I felt just as deserving. Fast forward, and this mindset can still rear its ugly head when I see others accomplish what I hope to do. It can be very discouraging. FOMO, fear of missing out, can be like a cancer. We see what appears to be happiness, success, and fulfillment flooding our social media feeds. What's the answer? Well, here's what I know for sure. I am right where God wants me to be, and His plan is on track. All things work out for those who love God, and God's timing is perfect so I can trust Him. How someone else achieves their goal will not necessarily look the same for you and me. Why? We're not them. We each have a special purpose that God has hidden just for us. Our job is to build a relationship with Him through His Son so that we can discover and fulfill His great plan. God has a wedding gown or promotion or whatever your heart's desire is in your future. And guess what? It's amazing. And our last scripture is Romans 8, 28 through 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is God who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, we're talking about the word of God today, Romans eight twenty eight. In all things, God works together for good. We don't always know the plans, do we? You know, that was not me that wrote that devotion about watching other people get married and wishing it was me. Because in my 20s, I was like, better them than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the favorite uncle. And by the time I got in my 30s, I had like 15 or 17 <laughs> nephews and nieces. So I was 
hey, this is great. Play with them, play football, do all this kind of stuff, go to their events, and then go home to my bachelor pad. And then I was traveling around the country. But, you know, in my 30s, I started thinking, God, you know, maybe do you want to bring me a wife? What's going to go on? And then finally, I was 40. I meet <laughs> Sheila. Don't tell anybody. Everybody thinks I was 30 when I met her because she's younger than me. But, you know, God's plan was so big. And Sheila, you had something about that too, right? Well, after my first husband passed away, I told my dad one day, I said, Dad, I am never going to get married again. Because if I get married again, he would have to be older than me, never been married, never had children, and love God with all of his heart. And my dad said, yeah, you're right. You're never going to get married again. But you know what? God has a plan. And when I met Jimmy, he was older than me, never been married, never had children, and he loved God with all of his heart. Why did you pray for the multimillionaire part? That's what I want to know. Because I came out of children's ministry. There was no, no millions sitting around anywhere. Because then it wouldn't be you. <laughs> and the point is, y'all, God has a plan. And so when we listen and we walk with him and we follow his plan and we don't fall into that FOMO, fear of missing out, it will create a beautiful life for us. The first thing that I read when I read that sentence in this devotional where it says, FOMO, fear of missing out, can be like a cancer. We see what appears to be happiness, success, and fulfillment flooding our social media feeds. What's the answer? Well, whenever I was in my 20s and my first husband passed away, I was approached by a huge national corporation. They wanted me to be their spokesmodel. They wanted me to travel to the United States and do speeches for their company. And now whenever I was growing up, my dad had told me constantly, oh, you could be president of the United States if you wanted to. And y'all, I really believed it. I really believed if I wanted to, that's the key. If I wanted to, I could have been president of the United States. So I just knew that I could accomplish whatever I really set my mind to. But my greatest desire was being a mama. I just wanted to be a housewife and a mama, and I wanted to pour my full attention onto them and be there for them. And so whenever this company approached me, it was easy to say no to that. But I've got to be honest, during times whenever I was at home and being with just those kids, I kind of felt at times like I was missing out, like, man, I could have been a big career woman. I could have been making all this money. I could have been meeting all these people. I could have been traveling the United States and doing all this exciting things because I really desired that. I love to travel. I love to go. I love to go to big events. I love to dress up and go to these swanky events. And guess what? After I married Jim, I did. We traveled the United States. We've been we've been to inaugurations. You know, Jim was the master of ceremonies. We've done so many beautiful, fun trips. It was my heart's desire, and God gave it to me. Not the way that I was thinking in my head it could have come. He gave it to me a different way. And God's got that for you. Whatever your heart's desire is, trust Him with it. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants to help you accomplish everything that you want. But trust Him in the way He wants it to happen. Because it may not be your way. What you're thinking and how you're figuring it out in your head may be the total opposite way God does it. Because sometimes God wants it to look like a total miracle so that He gets all the glory. Mm -hmm. So that He gets all the credit. So whatever it is you're dreaming in your heart, don't stop dreaming. Wake up that dream. Let that dream come alive again in your heart. Start speaking it. Start praying for it. Start believing for it. And let him do it his way. Sheila, that is so good. Whatever you set your mind to, it shall accomplish. You know, early on, I set my mind to a lot of things, but it, it just sat there. So, so. <laughs> but beating you, man, made all the difference. I tell you what, you gotta have. This is my bride month, my June bride. We're celebrating our Yay! anniversary. Yes, yes, bride <laughs> month. I love it. I love having mm -hmm. a June bride and, and celebrating that. And that I never had the FOMO until maybe you know mid thirties. I would see some of my buddies and then thought about children and all that. And we have that now. First Corinthians two nine and ten. I has not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those that love him, but he has revealed it to us by his spirit. 
And deep down in my spirit, I guess I always knew because when I proposed to Sheila and I called one of my colleagues, he was a pastor, and we traveled together for 10 years, I called him and told him, um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting married. I met the one at Bible school. He goes, really? I said, yeah, she's a widow with two children. And he called his son and goes, hey, Philip, he's doing it. He's marrying that widow. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you used to say that all the time in the hotels and different time at restaurants. You would say, yeah, someday I'll probably marry a widow with kids. I said, I never said that. He said, yes, you Mm -hmm. did. And he called his son over, who was an adult, married, and said, Philip, what did Jim used to always tell us? Who is he going to marry? And Philip goes, "Uh, a widow with kids. Why? Is he getting married? Does she have kids? Just like that. And I denied ever saying it, but... The spirit knew. Yeah. The spirit knew. Yep. And Sheila, she told her dad, I want a man that's never been married, loves children. And so it works out. God will give you the desires of your heart. Guess what? The desires come from him when you serve him and follow him and listen to the Holy Spirit. Those desires, the verb is from him. You know, if those things had not happened the way they did, I wouldn't have stayed living in Tulsa. I would have moved back to Florida, where I was from, where my mm-hmm. family was from and mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. And my children wouldn't have met their spouses. You know, we wouldn't have done a lot of the things that we did. God has a plan for us. Yes, he does. And our friend Nick V, y'all know Nick V, no arms, no legs. He has this terrific ministry called Life Without Limbs. He's one of the, our spokespersons for school chaplains. Nick V didn't know a plan. Why would God create me this way? Until the school janitor said, Nick, you have a gift of speaking. I seen how when they bully you, you just talk that situation and you smooth it all over. You ought to become a speaker. A school janitor told Nick V and he has seen and talked to millions. He talks to kings, ambassadors, prime ministers. Nick V looked and finally said, God has a bigger plan than I ever saw. Mm. You know, I traveled for many years, saw 2 million children as Armadillo Jim in America's public schools with pet armadillos teaching on the full armor of God and started a not-for-profit called Put On Your Armor and was out there like dare and just say no. Wrote the book Helping Public Schools and the week when I went to press, the Holy Spirit said, nope, you're not finished and inspired me to write this last page that said one day, School chaplains will be walking the halls of America's public schools. That book, published 17 years ago, is now happening. We just had calls from Pennsylvania. Louisiana just passed the bill. Florida, Texas. Well, the Holy Spirit already knew those plans. You see what I'm saying? If we will tap in to the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's leading, we will not have what's in our devotion of the day that Sheila just talked about, FOMO, fear of missing out. God has already predestined us for all of these calls, if you'll listen. It says, in the fullness of time, God chose to send his only begotten son. Jesus came and knew, and when he read the scriptures and closed the book and said, today, this scripture is fulfilled, he knew the plans that God had for him. In all things, God works together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. No FOMO in life, people. Not when you're following God and listening to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit knows that God is motivated 100% by love. And Holy Spirit, who is God manifested in our lives, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we can trust that God knows, God cares, God is willing And God is able, whatever your situation is today. Father, thank you that you know. Thank you that we don't have to fear of missing out when we're following you, serving you, because you love us and we receive that love and can trust in you that our life is right where we should be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all have a good day.